We are gathered here today to evaluate this really cool infinite series involving the Riemann zeta function. So we'll define s as the sum from k equals 1 to infinity, that is the sum over the positive integers k, of the zeta function at k plus 1 times x to the k, where x here is such that its absolute value is less than 1. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna adopt an interesting approach to solve this problem. I'm gonna transform it into an integration problem because, well, I'm the integrals guy, so might as well apply that technique to another infinite series. I remember doing something like that for an infinite series involving gamma functions that was beautiful. So I'm gonna try the same approach over here. But how exactly do I introduce an integral right now? Well, there's this really cool functional relationship between the gamma and the zeta functions involving an integral. That is the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 divided by e to the x minus 1 dx equals gamma s times zeta s, where s is such that its real part is greater than 1. So this implies that the zeta function equals 1 by gamma s times the integral from 0 to infinity. Now I'm already using x here in the summation, so I should use a different dummy variable for the integral. Why not use the u variable? So we have u to the s minus 1 divided by e to the u minus 1 du. Okay, cool. And here we're interested in zeta k plus 1. So that means zeta k plus 1 equals 1 by gamma k plus 1 times, terribly sorry about that, the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the k du divided by e to the u minus 1. Now all of our hard work implies that the sum s can be written as the sum over the positive integers k of x to the k times the zeta function now replaced by 1 by gamma k plus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the k du divided by e to the u minus 1. Now, because this x to the k divided by gamma k plus 1 term is independent of the variable u with respect to which we're integrating, we can slip it inside the integration operator and write this as the sum over the positive integers k of the integrals from 0 to infinity. Now, x to the k times u to the k can be written as x times u to the k du divided by e to the u minus 1 times gamma k plus 1. Now clearly the structure is convergent because of the exponential function we have in the denominator as well as the factorial function there. So we can switch up the order of the integration and summation operators and write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of the sum over k of x times u to the k divided by e to the u minus 1 times gamma k plus 1 integration with respect to u. Now notice first up that this e to the u minus 1 term is independent of the index variable k, so we can take this outside the summation operator and write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by e to the u minus 1 times the sum over the positive integers k of x times u to the k divided by gamma k plus 1, which I'm now writing as k factorial integration with respect to u, of course. Now this here is an infinite series we can work with. Recall the exponential function can be expanded as the sum over the non-negative integers k of t to the k divided by k factorial. Now here t is replaced by x times u, but our sum starts at k equal to 1, whereas for the exponential function, we start the sum at k equal to 0. But that's not a problem at all, because we can just separate the k equal to 0 term as t to the 0 divided by 0 factorial, which is, of course, 1, plus the sum over k of t to the k divided by k factorial, now starting at k equal to 1. So this implies that the sum over k of x times u to the k divided by k factorial equals e to the x times u minus 1. 
And that gives us a relatively simple integral to solve. We have s, now the integral from 0 to infinity, of e to the x u minus 1 divided by e to the u minus 1 du. And the next thing I want to do here is expand using e to the negative u. So we have e to the negative u upstairs and e to the negative u downstairs. This means we have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the x times u minus 1 divided by 1 minus e to the negative u times e to the negative u du. Now for a substitution, we're going to let e to the negative u equal some other variable, let's call it z, which implies that negative e to the negative u du, or e to the negative u du equals negative dz. And as u approaches 0, we have z here approaching 1, and as u approaches infinity, we have e to the negative u, that is z, approaching 0. So that means we now have s being the integral from 1 to 0 of e to, wait a second, we have e to the x times u, which can be written as e to the negative u to the negative x, right? So that's just z to the negative x. So we have z to the negative x minus 1 divided by 1 minus z, and we have this negative dz term, and we can fix the negative sign, of course, by switching up the limits of integration, but we'll reintroduce that negative sign because I'd like to switch up the order of the terms in the numerator. So I have 1 minus z to the negative x divided by 1 minus z integration with respect to z. And now for the final boss, we're going to reference one of our favorite special functions, that is the digamma function to solve it. The digamma function at z plus 1 has a really cool integral representation, that is the euler mascheroni constant, rather the negative of the euler mascheroni constant, plus the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus z to the x. No, wait, it was something else. That was x over here. Terribly sorry about that. And we have 1 minus z dz. I just thought to myself, wait, that can't be right. Anyway, uh, this is what we have, but we're interested in negative x. So that means the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus z to the x, z to the negative x, that is for our interest, divided by 1 minus z dz equals the order Mascheroni constant plus di gamma 1 minus x. And we have this negative sign with the sum as well, so this implies that the sum s equals the negative of the order Mascheroni constant plus the di gamma function at 1 minus x which is pretty cool. And what exactly was the unpacked version of this s variable? It was the sum over k of zeta k plus 1 times x to the k. And x here has an absolute value less than 1. So we can derive an interesting result here for x equal to 1 half. That would give me the sum over the positive integers k of zeta k plus 1 times 1 half to the k, or divided by 2 to, the, 2 to the k, that is. And that would give me negative order mascheroni plus, now what exactly is the di gamma function at 1 minus 1 half, which is, of course, 1 half. Now di gamma 1 half equals, wait a second, I need to reference the notes for that. Yeah, it's negative Euler Mascheroni constant minus log 2. So the Euler Mascheroni constants cancel out, and so do the negative signs, and we have log 2, which is a surprisingly interesting result here. That is the sum over the positive integers k of zeta k plus 1 divided by 2 to the k. So that's a pretty exotic infinite series on the left. Evaluates quite innocently to the natural logarithm of 2, which is pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.